Hello students, welcome you all back to the subject corporate accounting. Already one chapter we have completed in corporate accounting that is liquidation of companies. Hope you have watched all the videos on liquidation of companies. Got a good command on the theory video. First video I have prepared on theoretical concepts of liquidation of companies. The number of videos I have prepared for solving the problems on liquidation. Hope you have watched and got a good command on the topic liquidation of companies. Now we are moving to the second chapter, amalgamation of companies. So in this video, I'm going to explain you the meaning of the term amalgamation, absorption, reconstruction, and what is the accounting treatment of amalgamation. So keep watching this uh, theory video because if you are good at the concepts, then you can be able to understand the problems. The problems are completely based on theoretical part. So make your theory strong, conceptual clarity you must have. So have some patience in listening, in watching this video with full concentration. So it uh, gives me great pleasure that students are watching my videos with so keen interest and, and gaining more and more knowledge. So keep watching. Now we'll start the next uh, topic, amalgamation of companies. In this video, first of all, I'm going to explain you the meaning of the term amalgamation, absorption, reconstruction. Come on, let's begin. Amalgamation. Amalgamation will arise when two or more companies are liquidated and a new company is formed specifically to take over the business of old companies. Example, A Limited, B Limited, two existing companies are there. These two companies are liquidated, bound up and a new company specifically formed to take over the business of the old companies. So A company, B company, both assets and liabilities will be taken over by C limited. A new company is formed. This is the example of amalgamation. Absorption. One existing company taking over the business of another existing company. No new company is formed. Example, A limited, both limited, B limited, both are existing companies. Now A limited is wound up, liquidated. And all the assets and liability of A company is being taken over, purchased by B limited. This is an example of absorption. Reconstruction. Reconstruction will be applied when there is uh, the affairs of the company are reorganized. Affairs of the company are reorganized. So reconstruction will arise by two methods, external reconstruction and internal reconstruction. In external reconstruction, a new company will be formed. A new company will be formed to take over this old company. Same company will be there. Only the thing is, one company is wound up, the same uh, assets will be taken over by another new company. New company will be formed. Example, XYZ is an old company. The state of affairs of this old company are not good. That means financial position of the company is not properly disclosed in the balance sheet. The balance sheet is showing accumulated losses and other values of assets are not truly reflected in the financial statement. Now, the company is wound up. All the assets, fictitious assets will be removed. Other values, other assets will be brought to the uh, true, true value. Then a new company is formed, XYZ new company. One old saying was there, old wine in new bottle. The same logic will apply in external reconstruction. The same old company, values are changed and a new company is formed, external reconstruction. Internal reconstruction, no new company is formed. The same company, the assets and liabilities are restructured, revalued. That means all the fictitious assets, accumulated losses will be written off, flushed out on the asset side. And on liability side, capital will be reduced, reduction of capital. So assets and liabilities are completely reorganized, that is internal reconstruction. That will take up in the next chapter, separate chapter we will discuss about internal reconstruction. Now, this is all about the meaning of the term amalgamation, absorption and reconstruction. Now there is uh, accounting standard AS14. Institute of Chartered Accountants of India ICAI in India has issued an accounting standard AS14 on accounting for amalgamation. Accounting for amalgamation. So how to make the accounting 
when there is an amalgamation that is specifically given by AS14 and AS14 has not made any distinction between amalgamation absorption. It has treated that the same accounting treatment will be applied if there is absorption or amalgamation and this accounting standard AS14 is applicable, effective from 1 4 1995 on and after 1 4 1995 it is mandatory accounting standard. So compulsorily this AS14 must be followed whenever there is amalgamation absorption in India. This is all about AS14. Now types of amalgamation. See, here. broadly we divide the amalgamation from accounting point of view. From accounting point of view amalgamation will be of two types. Amalgamation in the nature of merger and amalgamation in the nature of purchase. So we'll see what are the differences between these two types of amalgamation from accounting point of view. First we will see amalgamation in the nature of merger. When we can say an amalgamation is in the nature of merger. So five conditions are there. If all these five conditions are satisfied then we can say this amalgamation is in the nature of merger. If any one of the conditions not satisfied it is not amalgamation in the nature of merger it will be amalgamation in the nature of purchase. So what are the conditions? One by one we'll discuss now. First, all the assets and liabilities of the transferer company. See, two companies are there, transferer company and transferee company. Transferer company is that company which is being liquidated. Vendor company, seller company is called transferer company. And transferee company is the purchasing company, the company which acquires the other company is called transferee company or purchasing company. So here first condition says all the assets and liabilities should be taken over by the transferee company from the transferer company. Example I'll give you A limited and B limited. A limited is the vendor company, liquidating company. Company khatam ho rahi hai, A limited. And B limited is purchasing A limited. So in that case, in that case, A limited is called the transferer company and B limited is called the transferee company. Jo kharidne wali company hai, wo transferee company hai. Aur jo company bik rahi hai, khatam ho rahi hai, liquided ho rahi hai, usko transferer company kaite. This concept you have to be, you have to remember. Because in all the problems we are frequently making use these terms. Transferer company and transferee company. Now, all the assets of the transferer company must be taken. Assets and liabilities of the transferer company must be taken by the transferee company. No asset and liability should be left. Ek bhi asset liability ko chhodna nahi. Sare assets or sare liabilities ko take over karna. Then only we can say this amalgamation is in the nature of merger. Secondly, not less than 90% of the face value of equity shareholders must agree to become the shareholders of the transferee company, not less than 90%. Example, A is the transferer company, B is the transferee company. The shareholders of A limited, not less than 90% of face value of the shares held by shareholders should give the consent. Should give the consent that we will become the equity shareholders of the transferee company in future. We give the proposal. They will give a positive response. So 90% of the equity shareholders should agree to become the equity shareholder of the transferee company. Second, third one, consideration should be in shares. Consideration, what is consideration we will discuss here. So consideration paid by the transferee company should be in shares. And cash will be paid only for fractional shares. If in calculations, if fractional share comes, for the fractional shares cash will be paid. But for other part, completely shares. Consideration should be paid in shares. Like B Limited is a transferee company. A Limited transfer company. B Limited must pay the consideration in the form of shares. Only cash will be paid for fractional share. Otherwise, completely shares. Then, business to be continued. It is intended that the purchasing company, transferee company has, is having the intention to continue the business. No intention to wind up the business. The transferers 
transferer company's business will be continued by the transferee company. It should not be wind up. No intention of winding up the business, stopping up the business. No adjustment in book value of assets and liabilities. The assets and liability of the transferer company should be incorporated at the same values in the books of the transferee company. And A limited ke assets or liabilities ka jo book value hai, same book values ko incorporate karna in the financial statements of B limited transferee company. No changes should be made. So if these five conditions are satisfied, then the merger will be called amalgamation in the nature of merger. And in normally examinations, very frequently they may ask you regarding Expl explain about amalgamation in the nature of merger and amalgamation in the nature of purchase. So you can write these five points in theory. And uh, how it will affect the accounting treatment of this amalgamation in the nature of merger, we'll see. Now we'll come to the next topic, amalgamation in the nature of purchase. We have discussed merger method, not purchase method. Very simple. An amalgamation which is not in the nature of merger will be an amalgamation in the nature of purchase. When it will happen if any of the conditions are not satisfied. Agar ye paach conditions mein se koi bhi ek condition satisfy nahi ho ra ya paach conditions satisfy nahi ho rahe to phir aise amalgamation ko kehte amalgamation in the nature of purchase. Right? Now distinction between amalgamation in the nature of merger and amalgamation in the nature of purchase. Theory question may be asked like this. What are the differences between these two amalgamation? Actually, in the case of amalgamation in the nature of merger, there is pooling of interest. There is pooling of interest of shareholders and all the parties. Genuine combination is called amalgamation in the nature of merger. Here, not only assets or liabilities merge, nahi ho rahe, but the interest of all the parties of transferer company is mixed up with the interest of the uh, transferee, uh, transferee company. Transferer company ke jo interest hai, wo sare interest mix up honge. Koi interest change nahi hoga. Koi interest change hoga. That means the proportionate share of equity shareholders will be same after merger with the transferee company. There is no change in the interest of shareholders in case of amalgamation in the nature of merger. But amalgamation in the nature of purchase, purchase simply the assets and liabilities are taken over. And one more point in case of amalgamation in the nature of merger, it is intended that the business of transferer company will be continued by the transferee company. It must be continued. Whereas in the nature of purchase, there is no compulsion. In case of amalgamation in the nature of purchase, the transferee company may carry on or may not carry on the business of the transferer company. That is the difference. So in this way, some differences may arise between amalgamation in the nature of merger and amalgamation in the nature of purchase. Very important topic is purchase consideration. PC it is called. The purchase consideration is the price payable. Is the price payable by the transferee company to the transferer company. Purchaser to the vendor. Now in our example, A limited is the vendor company, transferer company and B limited is the purchasing company, transferee company. When B limited is A limited, ko, so then A limited will pay the price to the seller. The buyer will pay the price to the seller. So B limited will pay the price. The price which it pays to the vendor that is called purchase consideration. In simple words we can say the shares or any other securities or cash which is paid by the transferee company to the transferer company that is called purchase consideration. In the coming problems, in every problem, we are required to calculate the purchase consideration. It is the most important calculations in case of amalgamations. So this is the meaning of the term purchase consideration. Now methods of payment of PC. Purchase consideration payment karne ke methods kaun se? Four methods are there. The first method is lump sum method. A lump sum amount will be quoted by the buyer to the seller. Example B limited. B limited will say to A limited that I we are going to purchase your company for an amount of rupees 
50 lakh. So this 50 lakh rupees is the lump sum amount which is quoted by B Limited to A Limited. Now A Limited will agree, okay, we will sell you our business to you for rupees 50 lakh. Suppose. So this 50 lakh rupees is the purchase consideration and lump sum amount without considering the assets, liabilities or all those things. Simply a lump sum amount is quoted. That is called lump sum method. But very rarely this method will be followed because the number of considerations, a number of factors must be considered for fixing the purchase consideration. Next is net assets method. Second method. In net assets method, we take all the realizable value or agreed value of assets and liabilities of the transferer company. Transferer company. A limited is the transferer company. B limited will say, we will calculate what is the present value of all your assets and liabilities. Assets and liabilities. We want to take so and so assets, land and building, plan and machinery, furniture, stock, debtors, cash in hand, cash at bank, all the values of the transferer companies, present value will be taken, take the total. The assets which are not taken or should not be taken, should not be taken, right? Only those assets which are taken over should be taken at their agreed values. Take the total of the assets. From that total of the assets, subtract the liabilities taken over at the agreed values. The liabilities taken over at the agreed values. Now take the total of assets minus total of liabilities that will give it net worth of the business. Which company's net worth? Transferer company's net worth. And that net worth is the purchase consideration. That is PC. This is called net <coughs> assets method. Now net payment method. In case of net payment method, different forms of payments are given in the problem. Different forms of payment like purchasing company that is B limited. B limited will say we will issue so many equity shares, 1 lakh equity shares of rupees 15 each and remaining balance uh, suppose cash. Cash we are going to pay suppose 10 lakh rupees. So 10 lakh rupees cash and 15 lakh rupees shares. So simply we add up what are the different forms of payment made by purchasing company to one lakh company. Add up the total will get the PC. So if all the different forms of payments are given, simply you have to add up. This method is called net payment. If some of the item is not given, then we have to apply net assets method. Example in the problem it is given that uh, purchasing company that is transferring company the trans comp transferring company will issue 1 lakh shares of rupees 15 each and the balance in cash cash is not given balance in cash in that case compulsorily we have to apply net assets method to find out the PC then only we can get how much balance in cash last one is share exchange method in share exchange method the shares will be exchanged between the transferee and company and the transfer company based on the intrinsic value or market value. So both the companies will calculate what is the intrinsic value of shares. Intrinsic value of shares or market value, any one value. Suppose I'm taking intrinsic value. We calculate intrinsic value of share of B limited and intrinsic value of share of A limited. After calculating intrinsic value of B limited share, we calculate what is the total value of the company. Total value of the company. That total value of the company will be divided by the intrinsic value of share of B limited. Intrinsic value of share of B limited will get the number of shares. So many shares will be issued by B limited to A limited. Or suppose if it is based on market value. We calculate the market value of share of B lim A limited as well as B limited. Suppose the market value of share of A limited vendor company, transferer company is 50 rupees. 50 rupees per share is the market value. Total number of shares are let it be 1 lakh. So 1 lakh into 50, 50 lakh rupees is the present market value of A limited. Now the market value of B limited is 70 rupees. B limited ka ek share ka market value is 70 rupees. Hai. Now we divide. 50 lakh rupees is the total value of A limited divided by 70 rupees will get number of shares. So many shares will be issued by B limited to A. This is called share exchange method. So these four are the methods of calculating the purchase consideration. So this method we are going to apply in the problem. But also you have to remember the theory. In examinations theory will be asked what are the methods of calculating the PC. Just now I have explained. 
Now, accounting entry is in the books of the transferer company, vendor company. Now, we are coming to the problematic part. So far, we have discussed about the theory. Now, problematic part. What are the journal entries, accounting entries to be passed in the books of the transferer company? Transferer company is the company which is going to be liquidated, wound up, finishing company. Jo company khatam ho rahi hai, wo company ko transferer company kahenge, usme journal entries kya pass karenge. Here you have, you have to remember, uh, remember that you have to give more concentration. If you remember these entries, easily you can solve the problem. If you ignore this uh, journal entries, definitely every problem will be difficult for you. All the problems are based on these general entries. Now I'm explaining in detail. The first for transferring the assets to realization. A limited is the vendor company, transferer company. The first entry, transfer all the assets to realization. A new account is opened called realization. The entry will be realization account data to all assets individually. All assets individually. Example, realization account data to land and building, to plant and machinery, to furniture fixture, to stock, to debtors, to investments, to bank balance, etc. While passing this first entry, keep in mind some points. The first point, all assets will be transferred to realization. All assets should be transferred to realization at book values, balance sheet values, right? Second point you have to remember. Uh, the assets, cash and bank balance should also be transferred to realization if it is taken over by the purchasing company. If in the problem it is given cash and bank balance are not taken over by transferring company, don't transfer to realization. Third point, the sundry data should be transferred at their gross value before deducting provision for doubtful debts. Fourth point, if any fictitious assets are given on the asset side, like p &L account debit balance, accumulated loss, or discount on issue of shares or discount on issue of debentures. These are fictitious assets. Don't transfer it to realization. First entry. By passing this entry, all the assets account will get closed. Assets account will get closed. Now, second entry for transferring the liabilities. Transferring the liabilities. Liabilities account data, provision for doubtful debts account data to realization. Liabilities, sundry creditors, bills payable or debentures. Usi tara, agar provision for doubtful debts hai, asset side ke upar provision for doubtful debts diya. To second entry mein provision for doubtful debts account data to realization. While passing this entry, again remember some points. Only those liabilities should be transferred to realization which are taken over by the transferring company. The liabilities which are not taken over by transferring company don't transfer. In the problem, it is given that the bills payable are not taken over by transfer company. Don't transfer bills payable to realization. To realization. Similarly, only outside liabilities should be transferred to realization. Reserves or accumulated profits should not be equity share capital, reserves and surplus should not be transferred to realization. And assets, while transferring the assets, all assets should be transferred, whether taken over or not. Whereas liability, only those liabilities should be transferred which are taken over. The liability which are not taken over should not be transferred to realize. By passing this entry, liabilities accounts will get closed. Two entries are passed. So first entry, transferring all assets to realization. Realization account data to all assets individually. Second entry, transfer the liabilities. Liabilities account data, provision for doubtful debts account data to realization. Two entries are over. Now we'll come to the third entry. For purchase consideration due. For PC due, purchase consideration due, uh, transfer company account data to realization, which is the transfer company, B limited is the transfer company. I am taking an example so that you can be able to understand. Remember, B limited is the transfer company, so B limited account data to realization. This is for PC due. Then fourth entry, PC received. PC jab received karte hain. So whatever forms, what are the different forms of PC we are receiving will debit. Example, equity shares. A limited is getting equity shares from B limited. So equity shares in transferee company account data, bank account data to transferee company, which is the transferee company B limited. So PC received country, equity shares in transferee company account data, bank account data to transferee company account. Uh, in our example, B Limited is a transfer company. So equity shares in B Limited account data, bank account data to B Limited account. 
that rule will apply debit the receiver credit the giver here the giver is b limited to b limited ko credit kar denge being the pc received for realization expenses ab ye liquidated ho rahi hai company ye liquidation ke ke liye kuch realization expenses pay karna liquidation expenses pay karna padta now this liquidation expenses depend on the agreement sometimes it will be paid by the transferer company itself sometimes it is agreed to be paid by the transferee company now we have to see the problem if in the problem it is given that realization expense are paid by the transferer company itself a limited itself then entry will be realization account data to cash realization account data to cash if it is paid by the transferer company itself if it is paid by the transferee company b limited two options are there but why to remember two options simply we remember ignore a limited will not pass any entry because liquidation expense are paid by the transferee company that's it now for sale of assets not taken over by transferee company sometimes some of the assets are not taken over by the transferee company agreement ke time pe ye hua furniture of a limited will not be taken over by b limited b limited furniture nahi liya ab ye furniture rakh ke kya karenge it will be sold जब सोल्ड कर देंगे तो पैसे आएंगे तो बैंक अकाउंट डेटा आर टू रियलाइजेशन वी शुड नॉट राइट एसेट बिकॉज इन द फर्स्ट एंट्री ऑलरेडी वी हैव ट्रांसफर्ड ऑल एसेट्स टू रियलाइजेशन विदर टेकन ओवर और नॉट तो फर्नीचर को भी ट्रांसफर कर दिए रियलाइजेशन में तो पैसे जो आएंगे फर्नीचर से नहीं आएंगे रियलाइजेशन से आएंगे तो बैंक अकाउंट डेटा आर टू रियलाइजेशन बट दिस एंट्री विल नॉट बी देयर एवरी टाइम Remember the first four entry compulsorily will be there in every problem. First entry transfer the assets to realization. Second entry transfer the liability to realization. Third entry purchase consideration due. Fourth entry purchase consideration received. These four entries compulsorily every problem we will have. The fifth entry realization expenses some problem you may have some problem you may not have. Ignore. अगर नहीं दिया प्रॉब्लम है छोड़ देंगे नेक्स्ट सेल ऑफ दोज एसेट्स व्हिच आर नॉट टेकन ओवर इन सम प्रॉब्लम्स इट विल बी देयर इन मोस्ट ऑफ द प्रॉब्लम इट विल नॉट बी देयर अगर रहा तो एंट्री पास कर नहीं रहा तो छोड़ देंगे फॉर पेमेंट ऑफ लायबिलिटी इज नॉट टेकन ओवर बाय परचेजिंग कंपनी जस्ट लाइक द सम ऑफ द एसेट्स आर नॉट टेकन ओवर इट मे हैपन सम ऑफ द लायबिलिटीज आर आल्सो नॉट टेकन ओवर बाय द परचेजिंग कंपनी बाय द ट्रांसफरी कंपनी अब बी लिमिटेड ये बता दिया है कि ए लिमिटेड तुम्हारे पास जो क्रेडिट आर्स हैं हम नहीं लेंगे अब क्रेडिटर्स को कौन पे करना है ए लिमिटेड खुद पे कर लेना है तो एंट्री विल बी लायबिलिटी अकाउंट डेटा टू कैश और बैंक कैश पे कर रहे हैं बैंक पे कर रहे हैं जिसको भी पे जो भी पे कर रहे हैं क्रेडिट करें तो लायबिलिटी को डेबिट करेंगे संड्री क्रेडिटर्स अकाउंट डेटा टू बैंक क्यों ऐसा करेंगे क्योंकि लाइब्रिटी को ट्रांसफर नहीं करें सेकेंड एंट्री पास करते वक्त वी हैव टेकन ओनली दो लाइब्रिटी विच आर टेकन ओवर द लाइब्रिटी विच आर नॉट टेकन ओवर आर नॉट ट्रांसफर टू रियलाइजेशन इन केस ऑफ सेकेंड एंट्री अब क्रेडिट आर्स को नहीं लिए थे इसीलिए नहीं ट्रांसफर करें अब पेमेंट करें क्रेडिट आर्स अकाउंट डेटा टू बैंक बट अगेन दिस एंट्री विल नॉट बी देयर इन एवरी प्रॉब्लम इन वन और टू प्रॉब्लम्स यू मे कम अक्रॉस दैट लायबिलिटी विल नॉट बी टेकन ओवर बाय परचेजिंग इन दैट केस दिस एंट्री नाउ ट्रांसफर ऑफ प्रेफरेंस शेयर कैपिटल टू प्रेफरेंस शेयर होल्डर्स इफ देयर इज एनी प्रेफरेंस शेयर कैपिटल इन ए लिमिटेड वेंडर कंपनी ट्रांसफरर कंपनी ट्रांसफरर कंपनी में अगर प्रेफरेंस शेयर कैपिटल अगर है तो वो प्रेफरेंस शेयर कैपिटल को ट्रांसफर कर देंगे प्रेफरेंस शेयर कैपिटल अकाउंट डेटा टू प्रेफरेंस शेयर होल्डर अकाउंट बाय पासिंग दिस एंट्री प्रेफरेंस शेयर कैपिटल अकाउंट विल गेट क्लोज्ड विल गेट क्लोज्ड इट विल बी ट्रांसफर टू प्रेफरेंस शेयर होल्डर्स नेक्स्ट एंट्री नाइंथ एंट्री फॉर ट्रांसफरिंग द इक्विटी शेयर कैपिटल एक्यूमुलेटेड प्रॉफिट्स टू इक्विटी शेयर होल्डर्स बैलेंस शीट को क्लोज करना है वन बाय वन पहले एसेट्स को क्लोज कर दिया फिर लायबिलिटी को क्लोज कर दिया फिर प्रेफरेंस शेयर कैपिटल क्लोज करे अब इक्विटी शेयर कैपिटल तो इक्विटी शेयर कैपिटल अकाउंट डेटा एक्यूमुलेटेड प्रॉफिट्स अकाउंट डेटा टू इक्विटी शेयर होल्डर्स व्हाट आर एक्यूमुलेटेड प्रॉफिट्स जनरल रिजर्व रिजर्व फंड इंश्योरेंस फंड कंटिंजेंसी फंड अगर ये पूरे रिजर्व्स अगर दिया फ्री रिजर्व्स ये पूरे रिजर्व्स को डेबिट कर देंगे और क्रेडिट किसको करेंगे इक्विटी शेयर होल्डर्स अकाउंट बाय पासिंग दिस एंट्री इक्विटी शेयर इक्विटी शेयर कैपिटल एंड ऑल एक्यूमुलेटेड प्रॉफिट्स विल गेट क्लोज now for transferring uh, for transfer of realization profit to equity shareholders after passing up to 9 entries we have to make an account ek account banayenge realization account ab ye realization account mein pure posting karenge all the entries will post it and we'll see which side is more if debit side is more than credit side there is a realization loss 
If credit side is more than debit side, there is realization profit. So imagine debit side one lakh, credit side.